a country surrounded by desserts, managed to turn 94% of its own wastewater into food, agricultural energy, and even geopolitical stability. While its neighbors struggle to maintain the minimum, Israel invested more than $2 billion to build a water system that seems to defy the laws of nature. But the most unsettling part is simple. Almost no other country can replicate this model. What lies behind such a sharp difference? And why does it change the future of the entire Middle East? The Middle East faces one of the harshest scenarios on the planet. With countries like Jordan and Syria experiencing drastic reductions in water resources, while Lebanon records a historic drop in its reservoirs. In the middle of this regional collapse, a contrast appears that borders on the impossible. Israel, with more than 60% of its land covered by desert, not only stabilized its demand, but turned abundance into a national strategy. It is almost provocative to see how, during a severe water crisis in the Middle East, one country became a reference point while its neighbors struggled to stay afloat. For many experts, the scene looks like it came straight out of a geographic paradox, where river-rich regions dry out while arid regions advance. In a single generation, Israel went from trucks distributing water to village residents to exporting knowledge, technology, and even water resources. The question that echoes is simple yet uncomfortable. How is something like this possible in such a hostile environment? And when that answer starts to appear, it reveals a before and after that very few countries have ever achieved. Families who grew up rationing every drop now live with water security that would have been unthinkable in the 80s. Drip lines now cross areas where only dust existed. And entire cities learned to deal with the desert in a nearly surgical way. Meanwhile, those observing from the outside try to understand how this practical miracle emerged in the middle of regional chaos. Yet, when we look deeper, we realize everything began much earlier, far earlier than it seems. In the 60s, Israel faced a problem that seemed to be moving toward the inevitable. The Sea of Galilee receded year after year, revealing strips of cracked land that alarmed both residents and authorities. The aquifers, once considered untouchable reserves, began showing signs of early collapse. It was like trying to fill a water tank full of holes while the population grew non-stop. This explosive mix pushed the country toward solutions that did not yet exist but urgently needed to be created. For many, it was the moment to think about water scarcity solutions before reality made that decision for them. The math simply did not add up. Agriculture was expanding too quickly, cities demanded more consumption, and natural resources were visibly shrinking. Imagine depending on a single lake to supply millions of people. Something as fragile as trying to sustain. Snow Palo, only with the Teat River. Researchers describe this phase as the true breaking point when survival stopped being a theoretical discussion and became a daily urgency. To make matters worse, Every new report showed that waiting was no longer an option. Social pressure grew, and families who once filled buckets in their backyards began facing severe restrictions. Irrigation lines were shut off without warning. Farmers lost entire harvests, and entire cities entered rationing mode. The feeling was that every drop mattered more than ever. It was in this almost suffocating scenario that Israel began a silent shift still invisible to those looking from the outside, but soon pointing toward a technology capable of rewriting the rules. When the first ideas of desalination appeared, many people doubted the concept. Turning seawater into potable water on a national scale sounded like fantasy. But reverse osmosis changed the game by acting as an intelligent, microscopic filter, letting clean and safe water pass through while keeping everything unwanted on the outside. Three simple steps, pressure, filtration, and purification began producing water as reliable as natural sources. And interestingly, it all began with almost handcrafted experiments by stubborn researchers in the 60s. Imagine pushing water so forcefully that it crosses a membrane as thin as a strand of hair, separating salt in a single continuous flow. This engineering, which once produced only a few liters, 
evolved into massive machines capable of supplying entire cities. Israel did not merely copy existing technology, it reinvented its internal components, reducing costs and increasing efficiency. Each improvement became practical proof that the impossible could be fine-tuned. The curious thing is that these plants did not start as mega-projects. Some began almost unnoticed, operating in small regions while engineers adjusted every valve and membrane. When the results appeared, it became clear that the country had found the backbone of its future water independence. Even so, the real strength of this system only becomes clear when we look at the numbers. And that is where the next topic reveals something even more impressive. When the first reports began circulating, many people were left speechless. The cost per cubic meter of desalinated water in Israel was only 54 cents, while nearby countries paid five or six times more. This difference changed everything because it placed the country years ahead in water competitiveness. With plants able to produce more than 2 million cubic meters per day, the impact was equivalent to the consumption of millions of people. Scholars affirm that very few nations achieved such a leap in such a short time, especially using desalination technology that was so advanced. The progression almost looks like a fiction script. 1997 marks the first milestones. 2005 brings accelerated expansion. 2013 becomes a turning point. And in 2023, the system already operates like a precision machine. Each year added new layers of efficiency that worked like strategic steps. The return on investment, once viewed with doubt, became celebrated by economists who highlighted stable supply and predictable costs. Water risk practically disappeared from the map. Families began having constant water, farmers gained predictability, and companies started investing in places they once avoided. For many analysts, this set of figures makes it clear that the country transformed a scarce resource into a national advantage. But the data becomes even more interesting when we widen the lens and observe something that rarely appears in headlines, industrial-scale recycling. And that is exactly where a new element steps into the spotlight. If desalination already attracted attention, wastewater recycling placed Israel in an entirely different category. The country reached about 94% reuse, a percentage that researchers describe as almost impossible on a national scale. The process sounds simple when explained without complications. Collection, deep treatment, and redistribution for agricultural use. This strategy turned the country into a global reference in wastewater recycling, especially because of the consistency of the results. The Shafton plant considered a quiet source of national pride processes more than 370 million liters per day. The resulting water is sent to agricultural areas in the desert with step-by-step -step monitoring to ensure safety even in extreme climate conditions. Farmers who once depended on unpredictable rainfall now rely on stability, something that changes planting decisions entirely. The difference appears in productivity, which increased in places no one expected. There are stories of families in the Negev who saw their fields revive after receiving recycled water. Tomatoes and peppers now grow in places once dominated by scorching sand, creating a sense of local rebirth. Little by little, cultural resistance gave way to trust and recycled water became part of everyday life. This movement opened doors to an even deeper transformation, which becomes clear once we look at the desert blooming. Walking through the Negev today, it is hard to imagine that those productive greenhouses once stood on hard soil and under hot wind. Drip irrigation. Born in Israel and famous for delivering water directly to the root, revolutionized the way land is cultivated in arid regions. In every row of tomatoes or cucumbers, there is an almost surgical precision that impresses even experts. This advancement connects directly to the long-term impact of the Israel water system, which became the foundation for the entire expansion. Family farms that survived decades of severe limitations now display productivity higher than regions with natural humidity. Studies indicate that the yield per acre in some areas surpasses countries with far greater water resources. The logic is simple, 
but powerful. Less waste, more control, and more production. Farmers say they can plan their entire year without fear of sudden interruptions. And that changes everything for those who live off the land. A striking example is a farm in the heart of the desert, operated by three generations of the same family. They witnessed the arid landscape transform into a vibrant one thanks to continuous recycled water and intelligent irrigation techniques. The feeling is like witnessing a silent rebirth built, drop by drop, with strategy and patience. And this transformation grows even stronger when we understand the role of water returning to the country's core. One of Israel's boldest ideas emerged when engineers decided to reverse the traditional logic of water supply. Instead of relying only on the Sea of Galilee, they created a system capable of sending to the lake the water produced by coastal plants. This turned the reservoir into a living water battery, always ready to stabilize the country during periods of high demand. For many analysts, this solution represents an advancement as important as the desalination itself. The technology operates like a giant return flow. When production exceeds the need, pumps push desalinated water across dozens of miles toward the interior. This ensures the lake never again drops to critical levels, something that frightened entire generations. Researchers affirm that this strategy creates a national safety net that very few countries have achieved. And the curious part is how all of this operates almost invisibly to the average citizen. With this system, Israel reached water stability never seen before in the region. Even in years with unpredictable climate, the country maintains strategic reserves that protect families, agriculture, and industry. The feeling is that water has finally stopped being a daily risk and become a real guarantee. And this shift opens space for important comparisons when we analyze how the world tries to adapt to new challenges. When other countries study the Israeli model, the first reaction is usually admiration mixed with doubt. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Australia are already studying their own adaptations, each shaping the technology to their specific climate. But experts emphasize that copying is not the same as replicating because each region brings unique challenges related to energy, logistics, and soil. This debate grows as the planet faces climate changes that pressure even regions that once had abundant water. The discussion intensifies further when we consider the impact of desert agriculture on the global scenario. Initial costs are one of the biggest obstacles for developing countries, which often have less infrastructure and lower investment capacity. Technical expertise also weighs heavily, since operating such complex systems requires continuous training and specialized teams. Even so, some governments view desalination and recycling as inevitable paths to ensure stability in the coming years. Researchers point out that these countries tend to advance in slower phases, but with significant long-term potential. There is also a growing understanding that no technology works alone without preservation, conscious use, and consistent policies. Israel not only adopted new machines, but changed habits, culture, and state planning. This is why so many analysts discuss whether the model is universal or if its success depends on unique circumstances. This global reflection opens interesting windows into topics rarely talked about, especially when we examine the hidden energy cost behind the entire operation. Behind all the water victories, there is a silent expense that few like to discuss. The energy required to move this entire system. Desalination plants require extremely high pressure and long-distance pumping, something that directly impacts the environment. This is why many researchers stress the need to balance technological progress with environmental responsibility. This balance has become one of the modern pillars of the water scarcity solutions adopted in the country to reduce emissions and costs. Israel has been heavily investing in solar and renewable energy to power its water operations. In sunny regions, this combination makes sense and generates positive impacts both financially and environmentally. The biggest challenge appears in managing brine, the highly saline residue that must return to the sea in a controlled way to avoid harming fragile ecosystems. 
Engineers are developing safer methods that prevent dangerous concentrations and preserve biodiversity. These discussions open the door to a bigger question. How far can a society rely on artificial solutions for something as essential as water? Some experts argue that technology solves the urgent need but does not replace conservation and long-term planning. Others view these strategies as a necessary bridge while the world faces increasingly frequent droughts. It is exactly at this intersection of engineering, politics, and survival that a more delicate topic emerges, one that can shape entire international relationships. Water self-sufficiency changed the way Israel positions itself in the Middle East, in a region where water has always been as strategic as oil. Controlling its own supply reduces vulnerabilities and strengthens alliances. This shifts military expectations, economic agreements, and even diplomatic conversations. Many analysts claim that for the first time, a desert country managed to turn desalination technology into a tool of regional influence. Agreements such as the constant supply of water to Jordan show how water diplomacy has become a central part of relationships. This type of cooperation creates trust, but also forms dependencies that must be handled carefully. Some experts say water has become a silent bargaining chip, capable of bringing historic rivals closer and stabilizing tense borders. The balance between solidarity and strategy has never been so sensitive. Meanwhile, the debate grows over who will truly hold power in the future, those with natural rivers or those who master the engineering that creates water on demand. The answer is not unanimous, but the impact is already shaping regional decisions. The combination of technology, politics, and resources creates a scenario few predicted decades ago. And when we understand this geopolitical layer, the story gains a depth that leaves one question echoing, a question that turns the beginning of this video into something even more intriguing. Israel has shown that water security does not depend on geographic luck, but on strategy, technology, and collective discipline. The future does not belong to those who have the most rivers, but to those who can turn scarcity into functional engineering. If this helped you see the topic from a new perspective, it is worth reflecting on how many countries are truly prepared for a world where water can become a synonym for power. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to keep learning about innovation, engineering, and the solutions shaping the future of water on the planet.